Hello, dear friends. Welcome to Revival Now. It is such a pleasure and honor to have you join us today. Thank you for downloading our podcast channel. Thank you for subscribing and thank you for joining us. And we also want to thank you for staying in touch, sending us emails, uh, following us on social media. We love to hear from you. And uh, we want to ask you if you have any prayer requests to please let us know how we can pray for you by emailing your, your prayer request or even going to our social media and sending us a personal message. We appreciate you all. And re revival must be a lifestyle, not just an event. And that's what I always say. Revival must be a lifestyle. Today, I have a dear friend of mine. He is uh, all the way from New Hampshire. Um, and the Lord is using him mightily uh, all over the United States and all over the world. His brother, Bert Farias, and uh, he's got an awesome testimony, awesome journey. God has been using him mightily. And uh, today we're going to talk about the prophetic. Um, you know, I like to bring people that have strong anointings and different giftings. And today I want to discuss more about prophetic, how the prophetic works, how the prophetic flows. I know this will be a very interesting topic, especially for a lot of people that flow in the prophetic. And I know we have a lot of listeners asking questions like, how does a prophetic work? You know, uh, when do I know that I, I'm actually seeing something? How can I discern the prophetic? We're, we're going to get into that. And it's going to be a very powerful episode. So I want you to please share it with your friends, share it on social media, and let us know how we can pray for you. Um, Brother Bert, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, before I introduce you, tell us where you're uh, coming live from. And, uh, you know, what a blessing to have you on Revival now. Thank you for your time. Thank you for setting this time aside. And, and please tell us uh, more about you and, and what the Lord is doing in this hour. Okay, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to be on this podcast with you and just share a bit of our lives and what God would have us say and share on this program. But my name is Bert Farias. I'm a, a son of Portuguese immigrants that immigrated to the United States when I was a little boy. Um, I left home when I was about 18 years old and have really never looked back. I went to college. I live in Windham, New Hampshire, which is Southern New Hampshire, just over the Massachusetts border. But I left home early in my life and went to a, a city called Bangor, Maine, and I went to college there. And it was at college that I really got saved and was discipled by uh, a gentleman that was just a few years older than me, but he worked in the mail room. And that's where, you know, back then we had snail mail, so we had to go to a, a little <laughs> office. He had to pick up our mail. And so here sat this young man that was Every time I went in there, it was like he was different. Something was different about him. And I was mm -hmm. raised Roman Catholic. So, but I was always a seeker of God. I felt from an early age, I would always read anything I could get my hands on in the Catholic church because there was something in me that wanted to know God. So when I noticed this young man in this mail room, I noticed he was very different. For example, his face was always like glowing. <laughs> I mean, wow. he had a countenance that was very visible. And I would keep looking at him every day. I would go get my mail and say, man, this guy is different. He had so much peace and so much joy. And then one day I saw an open Bible on his desk. And so I started looking at his Bible and then I would look at his face. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I would look at his Bible and then I would look at his shiny face. And I put the two two the two together and I thought okay this guy has a shiny face because he reads the bible a lot <laughs> <laughs> so he, he he's the one that led me to the lord eventually baptized me in water got me oh, baptized wow. with the holy spirit and discipled me for about a year before he had to move out of state and so that's how I got saved was through him and then when I was after he discipled me for a little bit spent some time with me he told me about a Bible school that I should go to. So I then went to Bible school and, and, and I just received my call to, to the ministry to preach. And uh, we've been, we've been preaching ever since, <laughs> but we wow. do. Um, we were missionaries for many years in um, West Africa, three different countries. And um, 
then the Lord sent us back to America. I thought he was demoting us because we were really happy on the mission field. You know, a lot of fruit, a lot of grace to do what we were doing. But whereabouts in West Africa? I'm sorry? Whereabouts in West Africa? Yeah, we started in Liberia. And then we went to wow. Sierra Leone. And then we finished up in the Gambia, which is a tiny Muslim country in northern West Africa. So we, our, our mission from the Lord was to establish interdenominational Bible training centers. Yes. And... And so we would do that and train the national leaders and they would take over our schools and our, our works and we would move on to another country and do the same. So it was very fruitful. In fact, I don't know if you know, or even if our viewers would know a man named Lester Sumrall. Oh yeah, I've well, heard of him, yes. Yeah, the late, the late Lester Sumrall. He's got a grandson that's also a minister now. And that's I, and, right. Yeah, but he, he was one of our first speakers in Liberia at our annual graduation and convention. And he was sitting in an auditorium and I was sitting next to him and he said, I believe this is the greatest move of God I've ever seen. That's and nice. I, I just, I did a double take like this. I was like, what did you just say, brother Summerall? He said, <laughs> I believe this is the greatest move of God. ever." I said, why is this so great? Because I didn't think it was so great. He said, because I've never seen so many denominations under one roof. Wow. Because our school, our Bible training center was interdenominational. So we, we, there was an anointing on, on our school that drew the denominational people to our school. That's and awesome. a lot of them got a lot of them got born again and baptized in the Holy Ghost. And then we were able to put the word of God into them right away. So many of these students are now leaders, bishops, apostles, prophets in other countries. That's awesome. And but I didn't know, I didn't realize how great the move was until I had Brother Summerall. He was 76 years old at that time. Wow. It took him to come and tell us, you guys are in a great move of God. You don't even realize it, <laughs> you know. So that's awesome. Um, and it's then interesting the Lord you mentioned Liberia because I'm actually heading there. I'm going to Monrovia. In about two weeks, we're holding a conference in Monrovia, and we're doing a crusade. So this is this is going to be my first time in Liberia. I've never been there, but I've heard amazing oh, wow. things about Liberia. But um, talking about the prophetic, uh, I know you did missions in Africa, West Africa, for a number of years. When did you feel like the Lord was shifting your mantle, and how did you become then more prophetic from the mission field into the prophetic how was that transition well um i try to make this a little short but you know when we left the mission field the lord opened the door for us to go to pensacola florida and be involved in another great move of god there as you may well know the brownsville revival oh so yes. we were part, we were part of a, a bible school that was birthed out of that revival and uh, we were on the senior leadership team there. And that's, again, that was when we began to really, you know, grow more as, as a leader. And the Lord had told me years ago when I was in Liberia, he said, because I was praying the Ephesians prayers, the Ephesians 1, Ephesians 3, that God would give me a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, that the eyes of my understanding would would be enlightened that I would know the hope of his calling. So I started praying about my calling, like, Lord, I know I'm young, but what is my calling? And he said, well, right now, wow. son, your calling is apostolic and function, evangelistic and function and apostolic in nature, because I was doing a lot of evangelistic ministry, but working with a young apostolic team, establishing Bible training centers. So I understood what he meant by that. But then he said, in your later years, it'll reverse and you'll you'll go move into being apostolic and in, in function and then evangelistic in nature. Yes. So that's what we're in now. The prophetic. I think people label me a lot as a prophet because I'm prophet hearted and I think I'm inspired prophetically yeah but i think a lot a lot of things a lot of times it's my writings that people base that on because years ago the lord said to me which was very surprising he said son your greatest your your greatest 
life's work is writing, is to write. And at That's that awesome. time, I had only written one book. It didn't go anywhere. And I thought, Lord, how can that be? Because I don't have a television program. I don't have a large platform. How can my life's greatest work be writing? I didn't understand that. But when I started to write, I mean, doors started opening and Charisma got in touch with me. I began to write for Charisma. Sid Roth got in touch with me because he read an article on Charisma and he wanted me to be on his program. So when I started writing, all these doors started opening and I realized, okay, this is really the Lord. You know, he's opening these doors through my writings. And so because my writings are very prophetic, I mean, we've written now about 13 books and many, many articles. So I think when people read them, they see like a prophetic word in them and they Mm -hmm. label me a prophet. But really, in essence, I would not be comfortable calling myself a New Testament prophet. I would be comfortable saying, yeah, my ministry is prophetic in my writing and in the way many times that I minister. But I got to go back to what the Lord said. He said, it's apostolic in function, but still evangelistic in nature. Brother Bert, let's talk about that so our viewers can understand the difference between nature and function. I think that's a really good, you know, aspect of, of the prophetic ministry when you understand how to operate how to really uh, flow in the prophetic ministry, because a lot of people think, well, you know, um, I just met someone at a church meeting and this guy is prophesying all the time and he's calling himself a prophet. Now, I I believe in the body of Christ, we have different levels. You have the prophetic office, you have the prophetic anointing, you have the prophetic spirit. And this is what I try to teach people. I coach them on, on the prophetic, you know, the difference between the different things, you know, how the Holy Spirit moves, you know, between the prophetic spirit, the prophetic gifting, and the prophetic office. Not everyone who prophesies is a prophet. Not everyone who flows in the prophetic has the gifting. So, so let, let's talk about that, the, the function and the nature. I love that. I love how you emphasize that. Yeah. Well, that's the way the Lord said it to me, and maybe I should ask him more details about what the difference is, but I understand he knew that I understood that in my heart, a function is what all these ministries, you know, when you talk about the Ephesians 4.11 ministry gifts, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, they are functions, as you know, Uh, the nature is, is, um, how could I describe that? It's, it's like, for me, the function now is apostolic, meaning I'm helping to father and mentor young ministers. I'm helping them to establish their works and their churches. So that's what he meant by function. But I still have this nature in me that when I get up to preach, people think they don't know what I am. They think I'm a prophet. They think I'm an apostle. They think I'm an evangelist because I preach a lot like an evangelist because my heart is always calling for the lost and for the backslider to come to Christ. But I think that's what the best way to describe it, the nature, I still get up to preach in my heart is still that to call for the lost and the backslider to come home. Mm. But my function is to establish the church, establish young ministers, establish works, which is the function. So yeah. I guess that's the best way I can explain it. So we can say the function is the office. It's kind of, it's, it's the same word for the yeah. office. Yeah. And the office is the, part of the fivefold ministry. And uh, what I tell people is, is when you flow in the prophetic, if God gives you a word, a picture, a symbol, an image, a number, you know, that, that's the spirit of prophecy. You know, when, when that spirit of prophecy falls on a believer, they're going to receive something. And, and that's why they need to be receptive to the Holy Spirit. They need to have their radar on. They need to pick up those signals, process them, and, and not be afraid. Step out in faith. You know, sometimes we are going to make mistakes. And, and if you are starting to flow in the prophetic, my best advice to anyone who is starting to see the prophetic gift blossoming in them is to allow the Holy Spirit to, to nurture it, to grow it, to, you know, to give you that boldness to come out of that cave. Because a lot of people are very insecure when it comes to the giftings. They're like, oh, should I do this? Or should I say something? Or should I step out? What would you tell them when, when they want to grow in the prophetic gifting? Yeah, I'm, you know, uh, how do you pronounce your name again? Alexandro? Alejandro, yes. Alejandro. You know, I'm very foundational in 
that's the way I was trained. That's the way my mind operates. So especially, you know, being a father now and mentoring more younger ministers, I like to be very foundational and basic and say that, you know, the, the, there's been an extreme amount of harm that's been done in under the guise of the prophetic, uh -huh. um, because I think we just don't understand it. So for me, you know, you describe it a little bit differently, but for me, you, you can be prophet hearted mm -hmm. and not be a prophet. Yes. You can you can flow in the prophetic inspiration and not be a, a prophet. A prophet, um, you know, a real New Testament prophet, first of all, it takes many years of developing somebody to be able to stand in what you refer to as that office or that function. God is not going to put any novice in any ministry office or function, right. much less the prophet, because the prophet has the ability to do more damage than anybody else if he's inaccurate That's and right. if he's sensational, you know, and he, always trying to move in this spectacular realm. In fact, the Lord told me that many of these modern day prophets are operating by familiar spirits and they think it's the word of knowledge, but it's a word of knowledge from a familiar spirit. Right. And it's a very fine line between the wow. two. And he said, most prophets don't even know when they're which channel they're functioning from. One day they're operating in an accurate word of knowledge from the Lord. And the next time they're operating in an accurate word of knowledge, but it, it's from a demonic source. It's mm -hmm. from a familiar spirit. Mm -hmm. So we have to be very careful. I like to tell young believers and young very ministers. Very discerning. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, li I like to tell young ministers you know, focus on establishing your ministry in the word of God first. Amen. Be real strong, be strong in the word, be grounded in the word and develop your own private life in the prophetic meaning. Like people don't realize like there's prophecy that's revelatory. And again, for right. the sake of definition, the gifts of the spirit, there is the simple gift of prophecy, which is simply speaking to edification, exhortation, and comfort. That's but right. then Jesus, people have all this muddled up. I mean, when you try to prophesy words of knowledge, words of wisdom, revelation into the future, now see, that's in the prophet's realm. I'm that's not right. saying that any believer cannot be used in that, but what I find with a lot of young believers is they see a prophet ministering and they, and they think, man, I'd like to minister like that. So they start trying to move into revelation. Well, you cannot give yourself a revelation because if you try, the devil's going to accommodate you and give you all this stuff that may be revelatory, but it's, it, it's, it has a demonic source. So we need to be careful. And also you have your soul because mm. young believers, many times they, they want to step out and minister, and I encourage that, but I also encourage them, listen and learn and observe and sit under so somebody, a father, a father, an apostle, a pastor that's really, you know, grounded in these things and is very foundational or else, you know, you go to these prophetic conferences and they teach you how to prophesy. People get all excited and they just go off and prophesy, you know, and it's, you really have to know those that labor mm -hmm. among you. You cannot just you know, like when I'm in a new church, I really try not to prophesy because they don't know me. You know, I, I don't, I don't, it's, it's very important today that we get established in lo, in, in our local church and grow and learn and mature there before stepping out into the so-called prophetic ministry and making a mess of things because you're still young and unseasoned in these things. So I would say, know the difference between the simple gift of prophecy wow. and the ministry of the prophet. And because, you know, you know this because Ben, if you've been preaching since you were 11 years old, I'm sure you've learned a lot of things, maybe even by accident, then a lot of things then a lot of people learn on purpose, you know, because you've been at this for a long time. But, you know, when you're in services, many times there's a flow yes. from, from heaven to earth. When you get into the prophetic ministry, it's like the Lord is speaking to his people and the flow is from heaven to earth. In other words, thus saith the Lord, the Lord is saying this, I'm, I'm seeing this, this is what the Lord, but then 
the another element of prophecy is from earth to heaven. See, people don't realize they think that all prophecy is wow. thus saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. prophecy is not just thus saith the lord the simple gift of prophecy the bible says if you speak in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs that is prophecy you are singing to the lord by inspiration you are singing a fresh song from heaven from your heart that's prophecy when you're preaching and all of a sudden you're inspired to say something that you never thought of that's not even in your notes that's prophecy. So You're true. moving in a prophetic stream. So people have to divide that because I think most people, especially younger ones, they think all prophecy is from heaven to earth, but that's not true. Most prophecy mm -hmm. is should be, especially for the younger ones, from earth to heaven. Like in my own private time, I sing to the Lord. And Amen. I sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs that are inspired by God. They're not rehearsed. It's not a song I got from YouTube. Mm -hmm. It's not a song that I got from church. It's my own song with my own lyrics that's inspired by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I think that's where a lot of young believers and young ministers need to develop themselves in is that's that. Right. As and they nurture their prophetic gift, they need to start declaring the word. You know, one way that I like to um, train believers when I, when I do this uh, prophetic uh, encounters or prophetic schools, I tell them one of the best ways to train your prophetic gifting is by reading the word, declaring the word, prophesying the word. You know, once you get the word into your spirit, then your spirit is going to become, a, you know, an open radar, a radar. You're going to become a radar. And so you're going to start picking up signals and the Lord is going to trust you more and more. I mean, God doesn't want, like you said, he doesn't want people that are going to, um, you know, prophesy all the time. They're inexperienced and all of a sudden they're, they're making a lot of mistakes and, and it's not, you know, edifying the body of Christ. You got to watch out. You got to be very discerning and you got to watch out for those that are always prophesying all the time because, you know, you know, heaven is about building the body of Christ. The kingdom of God is about building the ministries. And if you look at the Bible, even if you look at the life of you know the great prophets like elijah and all great other men of god they were not prophesying all the time not every single day you know and when i see people that are prophesying all the time and they're declaring big things you know like big promises and they're promising heaven and earth i'm very weary of those that are prophesying all the time because sometimes they can get into their soul into their flesh and they can say things that are well intended well meaningful but they don't necessarily hear them or they're not hearing them from heaven. So we need to make that difference, you know, because a lot of people in your church may be well-intended. They come around and they come put their shoulder around you and say something that's out of the realm of comfort, out of the realm of consolation, out of the realm of, you know, exhortation, not necessarily a prophetic word that is going to establish destiny. And that's where we need to make that, distinction correct brother yeah. Bert yeah no that's very good I, I I think what's happened over the years because I was born again in 1980 and I went to Bible school almost immediately after and then I went to ministry almost immediately after Bible school so we've been we've been in some kind of ministry for almost 40 years and I've seen where wow. I had I had an old one of my old Bible teachers tell me stay this is some of the best advice i've ever had as a minister he said stay try to stay in the middle of the road and mm -hmm. avoid extremes excesses and abuses of doctrine and practice meaning i think with the prophetic ministry we didn't recognize the prophet too much uh years ago but now and the apostle you know that apostles and prophets were not recognized in the body of christ for many years until you know, some some time ago, we put an emphasis on it because what these these offices are scriptural. They're New Testament. They're for today. And all of a sudden, everything became apostolic and prophetic. You know, and then and then the prophetic even more so. It's like every everything's prophetic. But we have to realize that is just one office, one ministry. Right. It was almost like an old Old Testament mindset because in the Old Testament, the prophet was the only ministry gift. We didn't have apostles, evangelists, 
really pastors and teachers. So we have to understand there's differences between the Old Testament prophet and the New Testament. And one of the big, biggest differences is in the, in the New Testament, it's only one of five major Ephesians ministry gifts. You can't make everything prophetic, call everything prophetic, because this is where I've seen the error. It's error through overemphasis. Mm -hmm. You know, they've overemphasized one ministry gift at the expense of the others. And so that's where people go from one ditch there are no prophets today to the other ditch, which everything's prophetic, you know, so we have to be really balanced and careful, not just with the prophetic ministry, but all the other ministries and just stay in the middle with that because we've got it. We've gotten into like a lot of the prophetic camp is for me personally, it's just too much sensationalism That's right. and it's too, it's too spectacular mm -hmm. and everything's got to be just something like just, that's the best way I can describe it. It's just too sensational, you know, over in the sensational realm. And I always like to bring people back to the word of God. What does the word of God say? What is really prophet? What is a pr prophecy? What is prophetic according to what the word of God says, you know? Amen. So true. I believe as the body of Christ, we need to be discerning. We need to understand what the Lord is doing in, in this hour. I think we need to grow in our giftings and, and cultivate those giftings, nurture those giftings, you know, step out in faith, allow the Holy Spirit to show us. But like you said, the best school that we can have is our private time with God. And as we spend time with him, as we have those audiences with our heavenly father then we're going to mature we're going to grow in our gifting we're going to be more exposed to other things in the heavenly realm and then we'll be able to step out with more confidence and boldness as opposed to someone who is not praying fasting but they always have a word you know what i'm saying so right, right. you you have the, those extremes in the body of christ the people that are very sensational people that always want to see the manifestation rather than seek the manifesting power uh, you know uh, one thing is to to have the manifestation another thing is to have a relationship with the manifesting power of the holy spirit which i believe that is the you know that is the uh preeminence that's what we need to look for we need to look for that place in the kingdom where we're spending time with god that's more eminent than just uh, having great manifestations around us and in our meetings god wants us to to spend time with him get to know him build that relationship rather than just having wonderful meetings and wonderful manifestations it's not about the manifestation it's about the one who gives the manifestation Right. Good. That's a good way to say it. Yeah. Get to know the word, but more importantly, get to know the author of the word. You know? Yes. And, and that's and that's Jesus. That's the Holy Spirit. That's the Heavenly Father. So I know it's a process. It's a growth. But I think that's where young believers and young ministers need to focus on is just cultivate your own prayer life and cultivate prophecy in your prayer life. I mean, Paul said, I will pray with my spirit. I will pray with my understanding. Also, mm -hmm. I will sing with my spirit. I will sing with my understanding. Also, I believe he's mainly talking about his own private life. He learned to interpret his praying in the spirit with his understanding. He learned to interpret his singing in the spirit by, by, by singing with his understanding that's where we learn we should our prayer times can be cultivated to where your prayer time with the father becomes a dialogue and not you just petitioning him all the time asking him for stuff all the time Amen. interceding all the time but he should be talking back to you you should have a con be able to have and that's what paul is talking about really when he says i will pray with my spirit and then i will pray with my understanding he's talking about i'm going to interpret what i'm praying in tongues when i'm wow. praying with my spirit in other words i have this communion with the father where i interpret what i'm praying out so that my mind can also be fruitful and i can know what i'm praying about so, I feel I like mean, jumping out of this chair. I mean, <laughs> the anointing is so strong and, and I'm loving just listening to those words because they are rhema. 
to my spirit, and I'm sure our listeners and viewers are getting it too. And I'm sure they, they have questions on, on the prophetic and they're like, well, you guys are talking from a frequency up here. And uh, how about you bring it down to down here so we understand what you really mean. And, and I think what people need to understand that the core of this, the core of the prophetic, and it's not so complex, it's not a formula, it's not, you know, uh, uh, a lot of people say, well, that, that's, that's really difficult. I mean, you've been a minister for more than two decades. You understand that. You got it down to an art. Not really. It's really simple. All you have to do is spend time with the Father. Build your relationship with the Father. You know, spend time with God. Build your gifting. Build your anointing. And, and this is what I always say. The more you spend time with the Father, the more you spend time in his presence, the stronger your gifting is going to become. And the more, you know, the more um, the communication is going to become so clear. It's going to become crystal clear. There will be no, you know, nothing in between. There will be no blockages. There will be no interruptions. There will be no interference because when the Holy Spirit is talking to his people, to, to the church, it should be, you know, that clear communication between heaven and earth and between earth and heaven. And I like the way you just uh, presented it. You said there should be more communication between earth and heaven, that prophecy communication going from earth to heaven. And I think that's so valuable, you know, singing in the spirit, prophesying in the spirit, declaring the word of the Lord. And that also applies to confessing the word, which is part in the realm of the prophetic. Now, what are the common mistakes that you have seen some people make? You know, you've been in ministry for a number of decades uh, you said four decades. What are some of the common mistakes that we should avoid in the prophetic? What are the prophetic pitfalls? I think um, we have to always question first, again, being foundational. What is the motivation of your heart? Like, so, why so. do you want to prophesy? Why do you want to speak to that person or, you know, receive revelation or receive a a prophetic word, what's, I mean, look in the mirror and be honest and say, why do I want to move in public prophecy? Because that's what we're talking about. I'm trying to emphasize more private prophecy, learn to sing to the Lord in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, develop your spirit like that, learn to interpret your prayers. But you're talking about public ministry. Again, why do you want to minister publicly in prophecy? Because that's where you're, you're, we know that the Lord, man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Yes. So a lot of these prophets, and I'm not being critical, but they have a, a, a lot of them, and I've heard many of them, and, you know, just having a little discernment, you can see that many of them want to be seen and want to be heard and want to promote their ministry, so they use prophetic revelation so-called and prof personal prophecy also has gone into a ditch and and they wind up deceiving many if they're not accurate or as i said earlier you can minister in revelation and be ministering by a familiar spirit so i That's think true. the motives of your heart purify your delivery and purify your ministry because if you think about it when Jesus first started his public ministry, he went right to the heart. Mm -hmm. I mean, he said, when you pray, don't do it to be seen by men. Yes. When you fast, don't do it to be seen by men. When you mm -hmm. give, don't even let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. In other words, he went right to the motivation of your heart. The mm -hmm. Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes. He started talking about a righteousness from the heart and a purity from the heart. He said Amen. that the, the pure are going to see God. And, and that's, to me, I love to teach on the motives of the heart because I see that that is the basis of all of God's judgments. When yes. we stand as yes. believers before the judgment seat of Christ, it's the motives of the heart that God's going to look at. Why did you do what you did? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a scariest verse in the Bible in Matthew chapter 7 where some people are going to prophesy and work miracles and even cast out demons. That's and right. Jesus is going to say, 
depart from me, I never knew you. I mean, you mm -hmm. talk about a scary verse. That I don't want to I don't want to prophesy and not know the Lord mm -hmm. and have him say that to me. So that's why I'm constantly walking before the judgment seat of Christ. Even in this life, I try to keep the judgment seat of Christ in my heart where I'm, I'm, what, what I'm doing, I'm doing in the sight of God. What I'm saying about my brothers and my sisters, I'm doing in the sight of God. If I'm gossiping, slandering, if I'm criticizing another brother, I'm mm -hmm. not discerning the body. I'm doing that in the sight of God. And you'll be, you'll be judged for that in the end. So right. I think, again, being very foundational, you have to ask yourself, why do I want to prophesy? Is it really to edify my brothers and sisters and the people of God? Or is there something lurking in me that wants to be seen and wants to be mm -hmm. heard and wants to platform, wants to promote my ministry? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's where the rubber meets the road that's is right. what is the motivation of your heart? I See, what I, Go ahead. what I just said to you, what I just said to you, Alexander, I have a hundred people would say, well, you're being prophetic. See, that's how my prophetic works. I go for the heart. Uh, uh, a prophet is a reader and a discerner of the yes. heart. And he'll speak to the hearts of people, mm -hmm. like the core foundations of the heart. And, mm -hmm. and the anointing and the grace on a real prophet is to draw the hearts of the people closer to God. But a lot of these prophetic ministries, I find that they're drawing people further away from God because their ministry is in the sensational, spectacular realm. And the heart, you know, when you hear a prophet, sometimes your heart becomes puffed up because mm -hmm. you want to hear a real nice word for yourself. You want to hear something good that's going to help you. Some great prophecy about how you're going to get rich and you're going to have a great ministry and you're going to do great things. See, that feeds the ego and that feeds the wrong part of our heart. So what we have a lot today is Indeed. prophets that want to be seen and heard and people sometimes that want them to prophesy to them good things. Like Jeremiah, I think it was. The prophets are prophesying peace, peace. But Jeremiah came along prophesying panic, panic. You know, I'm warning you. You know, these are false prophets. These people prophesy out of their own heart and out That's of their right. own vision. You mm -hmm. know, so we got to be really careful when it comes to the prophetic. Checking your motives, checking your spirit, checking your heart before the Lord. I think those are common practices that any believer should evaluate. They should exercise every day or, you know, every time they have a word from the Lord, they should go back to the Lord and say, well, Lord, what is my heart? And do I have the right motive? And is this the right timing? Also, the timing factor is something yes. that a lot of people don't discern or don't know how to read very well. And they, they, they think that the prophetic word must be delivered on the spot right there and then, no matter what kind of confusion, chaos, or what kind of, you know, uh, what what kind of outcome is going to produce a lot of people especially if they're not seasoned especially if they're growing in the prophetic they they just don't know how to discern the timing factor and i think the timing factor is it's it's very important for all of us as believers and ministers to really discern and know when we need to deliver the word the, the know-how and the timing factor because um the word comes from heaven. The word is from the Lord. The, the word is like a diamond that God gives you. It's a word that God is entrusting you. The delivery is, is obviously something that you have to allow the Holy Spirit to show you how to deliver that word. The timing is also very important because that's linked to wisdom. You know, when am I supposed to deliver this word? And if God's saying now, then go ahead. If God is not giving you in a specific time frame, then you need to ask the Lord for, for the right delivery and the right timing, because that's going to make a difference in how that word is going to impact or how that word is going to unlock, you know, uh, destiny or how it's going to bless somebody. I think it's, it's been wonderful. It's been so refreshing to talk about this and, and expose people to the prophetic and, and teach them some of these foundational values. And, you know, we're running out of time here, but uh, before we wrap up the show, Brother Bert, I know the Lord has given you a message for the church. 
You have a burning message. I've been uh, obviously following you in social media, reading some of your articles. And uh, by the way, we are on the CPN network, the Charisma Podcast Network. So a lot of our viewers and listeners are actually listening from Charisma. And uh, what what is the word the Lord is giving you for the church now? Like, I know we're going through a lot. We just came out of a pandemic. We're seeing the war in, in, you know, in Ukraine and, you know, that conflict between Russia and Ukraine. A lot of things are happening at the same time. And a lot of believers are seeing what's going on in the spiritual realm. You know, we just had an important major development two days ago, a leak, you know, from the Supreme Court where we could see the the um, legislation of Roe versus Wade overturned. A lot of things are happening. There's a lot of shaking and it's exciting. What do you think the Lord is saying to the church now? Well, I think there is a, a real distinction and separation that's being made right now between what I call flesh churches and spirit churches. Mm -hmm. I think there's a real distinction being made between flesh believers and spiritual believers. I believe there's a distinction made between those who still are friends with the world and those that are really becoming friends of God. Amen. I mean, this is a hard, hard time we're going through and hearts are being weighed and measured and the Lord is making a separation between the real church and the false church. Those that are playing with God, playing church, and those that are really in love with Jesus and going after Jesus. And so I think the circumstances in the world, see crisis will push us will put pressure on us where we began, hopefully, we began to examine our hearts in the light of God's word and be making decisions either for or against what Jesus wants for our lives. So I believe I'm seeing a distinction and a separation in the church today. There are churches that have become very progressive mm -hmm. that even deny the word of God today. I believe there are churches that I call them attraction churches, that they're doing anything and everything in the way of marketing and programs to try to bring people into the church. Mm -hmm. But then you have the church that's really moving in God, moving in revival, moving in the word and spirit. And so I'm seeing a, a greater distinction that I've ever seen in my life between what I'm, I'm referring to as flesh churches, for the lack of a better word, flesh churches that are moving in human wisdom versus spirit churches that are moving in divine wow. wisdom and are moving with God. So I believe that's the, the nucleus of what the Lord's put in my heart for this season we are in. I mean, I'm preaching about it. I'm writing about it. It involves many other things, but hearts are being weighed in the balance. And the Lord's saying, which way are you going to go? Are you going to choose me or are you going to choose what you want? Are you going to choose my plan or your plan? Are you going to choose my purpose for your life or your purpose? And so, you know, this is a time to examine our hearts in the light of God's word and his spirit. Amen. I believe what God is doing right now, he is uh, purifying the bride. He is uh, yes. tweaking yes. things. He is uh, perfecting us, you know, working with us. Uh, sanctifying our hearts and, and bringing us to a point. Uh, it's like a new standard, a new dimension. It's a new level, new season, new age in, in the prophetic, even in the church. I believe we've come out of a pandemic. And, and, and the reason we went through that and the Lord allowed us to go through that is because he wanted to purify the church. I know before the pandemic, a lot of churches were focusing too much time and too many resources and too much money on, on how to lure the lost, how to bring them into their churches by using comedy and, you know, uh, a lot of different tools. And I'm not against comedy, but when you replace the glory, when you replace the fivefold ministries for a comedian on a Sunday morning and you're not feeding your church with the word of God, but you're giving them comedy, 
you know that's when i see that the lack of uh depth and discernment and when you try to lure my generation you know i'm a millennial i'm only 35 and you you're trying to lure my generation or generation z you know the, the younger ones the teenagers with entertainment and all they want is a real encounter with god all they want yes. is a real yes. touch from heaven all they want is a real message a real person a real preacher you know, I went to a big church in Texas, and, and I know the churches have gone to the lengths of, uh, that. you know, not just demonstrating, but they're trying to really have that, that element of shock, like, look how good, how professional, how amazing, how pro we can do this, you know, the gospel is simple and powerful. And we don't, I mean, I know we need to use those creative illustrations and, and technology and all of that. But we have to keep the gospel, the gospel, yes. you know, we have to keep the main thing, the main thing, we can't water it down and make it sound different, because the gospel is, is life changing the gospel, it's going to transform people's lives, the gospel is going to change people's destiny. As an evangelist, you know, I, I grieve when I go to some churches and they put they set aside the gospel and they, you know, have their own motivational speech and, the, you know, they try to use other words. They try to avoid using the word repentance and, you know, right. heaven and hell because those words can offend people and they, you know, people they they these pastors feel like oh people can be turned off if they come to a church on a Sunday morning they hear these messages. I believe what God is doing and after we went through this pandemic, He is taking the foundations of the church you know i went to a church in texas and i saw a hologram of the pastor and the pastor was preaching through a hologram you know and, and i'm thinking why can he just raise other leaders and believers in this house you know to preach why does he need to have a hologram of him you know and i think this 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 way of marketing church of the church being centered around men around personality around ministries that are just self-driven instead of god-driven has come to an end that that, yes. that this mega church egotistic era has come to an end god wants to build a kingdom he wants to build a real true church that's going to go through more testing and more trials and tribulation down the road but we're going to have the strength and the character to go through it with flying colors and we're going to be able to overcome in the end times yeah. i think that's what the lord is doing in in this prophetic yeah. age and i'm excited that we get to be part of it so brother barrett how can people reach out to you how can they visit your website give us some of the of the best ways to uh contact your ministry yeah our website is holy dash upper dash fire.org the name of our ministry is holy fire ministries that's kind of the hub. You'll find all the information on our ministry there. We have a blog you can follow. We have a YouTube channel you can follow. But our biggest connector is we do these Holy Ghost forums twice a year in the spring and in the fall right now. But we're starting to do them in other places across the nation because people are hungry for the supernatural. I mean, the prophetic ministry is supernatural. So we are not opposed. I mean, we gave a lot of cautions on this program, a lot of warnings, be careful of things, but we are products of the prophetic ministry. I have prophet ministers that prophesied destiny into my life, and I'm very, I'm eternally grateful to them. So we do these Holy Ghost forums that are, we have a, a group of panelists, Ephesians 411 ministers that minister all together at once in the word and in the spirit. So we that's our big connector. It's like our fathering, mentoring platform. And then we have our website. And of course, all our books are on our website and also on Amazon. You can find them under my name. And, uh, and that's about, that's the extent of, if you want to connect with us, connect with us that way. I mean, obviously I can't have everybody contact me personally. I wouldn't have time to respond to everybody, but if you connect through our website or YouTube channel or come to one of our Holy Ghost forums, we'll connect there in awesome. a deeper way. 
Thank you so much, Brother Bert, for joining us on Revival Now. We really appreciated your input, your insight, your heart, everything you shared with us today. And uh, please make sure you follow him through the website, the social media, and all those uh, amazing outlets where the Lord is using um, Brother Bert and through his prophetic ministry, apostolic ministry. I believe God wants to do amazing things in this hour. And remember, revival must be a lifestyle, not just another event. Have a great day. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. All right. Thank you, brother.